guys, what's up? In this video, I want to talk about some of the new updates that Figma has introduced in Config 2024. Now we don't have access to these updates directly in Figma right now. So what I've done is I've basically taken screenshots to talk about some of these updates, give you my opinion as well, and obviously uh, discuss more about them. So this video is basically going to cover most of the updates that you've probably missed or you aren't aware of in config 2024. So let's get into it. Well, the first update that you actually see in front of you is obviously the redesigned or the revamped UI of Figma. So you basically have floating uh, the floating left sidebar and floating right sidebar. You all the top uh, tools bar is also now moved to the bottom so that that definitely does save some space because um, obviously it was occupying a lot of vertical real estate at the top so that's good but I'm honestly not sure about the efficiency of this and whether this was actually needed I mean config 2024 is a huge event and just demoing this particular feature just a redesign uh, I'm not completely sure about it. I'm not sure if I'm sold. The next thing that they basically introduced is the option to actually obviously collapse it. So you can have the collapsed view as well. Apart from that, they also have a contextual right hand sidebar. So what happens is if you have a frame selected, you're going to have uh, the options of a frame on the on the sidebar. But if you let's say have a component selected, then the component in itself would actually be displayed like for example properties of a component would be displayed on the right hand sidebar very similarly you can also go ahead and actually now this is good you can actually expand the sidebar on the right hand sidebar if you want to so that definitely is very helpful you also have a lot of other controls on the right hand sidebar which uh, I think is a huge bummer for me so imagine previously when you used to have two rectangles maybe selected and then you used to combine them and union them or so I, I think they're probably going to at the very least have that contextual on the right hand sidebar based on what I'm seeing right now. It's actually buried inside a drop down menu, which obviously definitely isn't good. The next update that they've introduced is about auto layout. So obviously with auto layout, you can actually ask AI to suggest an auto layout. So even if you don't have everything grouped together, even if it's just a simple frame, you can use the suggest auto layout feature and what it's going to do is automatically it's going to create multiple frames, multiple nested auto layout frames in order for auto layout to work. The other thing that they've introduced is the ability to actually expand things and then have them fill container automatically without necessarily going to a drop down and choosing fill container, which is a nice to have, I guess. The other thing that they've introduced is basically the option to drag specific elements by pressing control and if you press control and you drag it inside of an auto layout frame they are automatically absolutely positioned the other update that they've introduced is for ui kits so they now have baked in ui kits from ios from material design and some of some simple design system that they've introduced by themselves so you can actually just use these ios kits or material ui kits directly you can use the buttons you can use the drawers you can use a lot of these, these different things and you have the ability to actually just go ahead and include them. Apart from just including them, you can actually change the colors as well. You can even change, let's say for example, which mode is actually being displayed. Like for example, is this for a desktop view? Is this for a mobile view? And you can just do those changes directly and have those changes in front of you. Apart from that, you also have live code for obviously some of these material UI kits and stuff along those lines, which is good. Now coming to the most horrible thing that I personally feel like Figma has done is the dev mode, which is completely useless in my opinion, in my personal opinion, I'm a front end developer as well. I mean, it's useful, but they're charging extra for this dev mode. So previously people used to inspect and just go along with their day. But now people, my developers actually have to pay for this dev mode and it's horrible. So what they've done is after a year of awesome uh, working and just making sure they actually get things right. They've introduced a new state. If you make some changes, they have a yellow icon. And now this is like an uh, a, like a modified state or whatever it is. And then you can add a comment to it to actually inform developers that there are some changes that have been made to this design. So yeah, just a new status update. Amazing, amazing Figma. They have this again ready for dev mode now. Um, if you click on that in any file for developers, you actually get a pretty condensed view of all the things that are ready for dev and a person can actually just click on them to go to a focused view. Uh, in that focused view, they can actually just go ahead and see all of the details about that particular design. They also have introduced a new responsive um, <clears throat> 
preview. So previously we just had a preview where you can expand it and it used to scale your designs. But now they actually have an option to make it responsive. So now obviously your auto layout and stuff along those lines can actually be seen in action directly by developers. And I think that's good. The other thing that they basically have is something like Code Connect where you can connect your component in Figma to VS Code. And if you make certain changes from VS Code, they can actually be shown directly in Figma uh, and you can see them. So, I mean, that's good, but we're not really sure how that actually works. So once we actually get our hands on that, I think we'll probably know a lot more and how useful that is. But I mean, it's time for publishing applications, for publishing websites directly, and Figma's just giving us, hey, you can copy code, you can connect elements and stuff along those lines. I mean, give me a break. But anyways, <laughs> that's what they have. So now coming to more interesting things, they have AI, obviously, which is obviously expected. This is the age of AI. So you can actually just go ahead and make crappy designs using AI. Um, not so crappy. I mean, Framer AI has already done this. You can make websites and stuff. And I guess this is doing a pretty similar job. It's um, creating screens and it doesn't even right now use your design system components. Unfortunately, it's just like making random screens. So, I mean, it's okay for starters just to uh, brainstorm things. But I mean, so many tools have already done this. UIZard, I think, has al already done this. Framer AI has already done this. And a lot of noise for this has already died down. But good thing is you can update the colors very similar to Framer AI. You can update the border radiuses used in the design. You can change the text as well and stuff along those lines. Pretty basic stuff. Very similarly, you also have search capability. So imagine you have an image and you want to find where that particular image was actually used um, or where that particular design was in Figma. You can just paste the image in Figma. You can then go ahead and actually search for that image and you can actually just directly get your designs from maybe different files and stuff. So that's good. I guess you can directly find the things that you're looking for. Um, yeah, I guess that's that. You can also just search by writing a text. Uh, for example, maybe you remember some text that was on the screen. So you can just write that text and it's going to give you matching results and you can find uh, your files using that as well or your designs using that as well, which is okay, I guess. <clears throat> the other thing that they've introduced is the ability to actually search for things by just drawing them. So you can have a pencil, you can draw an icon, and you can probably find an icon. I'm imagining you can probably find your designs or illustrations using this as well. So this is a neat feature. I don't really see anyone using it, honestly. I'm not sure how many people would be drawing things to actually find them. But I mean, it's a nice thing to show in a in config because I don't really know what they what else they have to show, not really much. You can also search for designs directly in the community. So that's another feature that they have. You can directly search for designs in the community. You can drag and drop them. This is really good for beginners for finding inspirations and stuff. So, I mean, I think this is definitely beneficial. Okay, some other stuff that they've introduced. So the other AI stuff that they've introduced is the ability to actually just go ahead and have um, suggestions for duplicated content. Like for example, in this case, you have a recipe, you can duplicate content and ask AI to give you suggestions. And it's automatically going to update your uh, content. Very similarly, you can obviously have images in there as well. You can uh, use ChatGPT to generate images. And you can also do translations. Um, so you can basically select a design, you can choose to translate it to a different language and it's gonna convert the full design into a different language, uh, which is a good feature, I guess. There are already plugins doing this, uh, but that's fine, I guess, native as a native feature. The other important thing is obviously the ability to rename your layers. So you can go ahead and actually just rename all of the layers. And I think it's doing a pretty great job at it. The other feature that I think is pretty interesting is the ability to actually just select a bunch of screens and then basically ask AI to create a prototype out of it. I think this is definitely a useful feature and it's gonna save us a lot of time. So this is definitely good stuff Figma, but I mean, we needed more stuff like this. So the other thing that Figma has introduced are slides. So now you can have your slides uh, and pitch text directly in an actual slide-like interface. Here you can actually view all of your slides just using a similar uh, UI like keynotes. 
you have your slides here you can even change colors directly and it's even the text color is going to change depending on the background color that you that they that you've used so that's pretty good apart from that you also have a grid view where you can see all of the different images that you've used or the slides that you've used you can even reorganize complete sections uh, directly just by uh, clicking on the section row and dragging them up and down you can even reorganize a single slide if you want to and it's all going to be snappy unlike um, figma's default interface so that's good if you happen to include some slides that do not match your template style or your design style or your colors or your fonts you have the ability to choose the colors and the fonts that you've been using it's going to update your slides directly so that's i think uh, definitely uh, going to save a lot of time Apart from that, obviously, you have this view where you are going to have your presenter notes on the right. You're going to have animations going on. You basically have the slide up and down thing. And you also have AI directly here. So if you go to a slide, you can actually tweak uh, the voice or the tone that you're using in these slides. And it's going to automatically show those results to you. So that's pretty good, I think. Um, one major thing that they've introduced is the ability to actually embed your prototypes directly within these slides. So if you have a prototype link, you can copy it directly, paste it within a slide and it's going to be directly there embedded. If you actually go to a presentation view, you can actually see those prototypes actually being playable and a person can interact with them like they would do in a normal prototype. So this, I think, is a pretty neat feature. Apart from that, they've introduced a bunch of other minor things or they're planning to do so. Like, for example, uh, polls, uh, for example, like different types of scales. But the problem is that even here, apart from the horrible dev mode, they're actually planning to have this behind a plan as well or maybe some extra pricing as well. So, I mean, they keep on milking us for some reason. And I honestly don't know what the design community, myself included, is doing using Figma. I'm really excited to hear what you think about these features, whether you're as disappointed as I am or you are really excited about it. Compared to Config 2023, I feel like this is a huge letdown for me. And obviously, uh, them sucking money out of us is uh, even a major letdown. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.